the award for himself, but he's denied his table to mock us. Obote led the country from its birth in 1962. After Uganda was granted independence from Britain, he held power as the head of a one-party government. Under Obote, an army officer called Amin had been promoted to military chief of staff. The two quarrelled and Amin's troops seized control in January 1971 while Obote was visiting Singapore. It was a bloodless coup, and the then Major General Amin named himself president. He accused Obote, now exiled in Tanzania, of being a dictator, and promised a new liberal regime. One of his first acts was to free from jail a hundred people said to be political prisoners. <laughs> seems to be on the verge of a new era. But it's been an era marked by countless violent deaths. Fifteen Ugandans were executed in this Kampala Square. They've been convicted by a military tribunal of plotting to overthrow army. A crowd of 50,000 people saw them mown down by a firing squad. Schools were closed and the children forced to walk. The Christian faith is strong in Uganda, but Amin and his military followers come from the country's Muslim minority. They want to convert the rest of the country to Islam. Many Christians have been arrested and never seen again. The parliament building in Kampala has not housed an elected assembly since Amin took control seven years ago. He had promised to end military rule after five years. On the economic front, Uganda moved from crisis to crisis. Many of the country's professionals and managers have fled waves of arrest and killing. The industry and agriculture have of meat costs one dollar fifty cents a pound. <laughs> 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 rising coffee prices. Coffee accounts for 95% of the country's export earnings. Production fell by 30% in 1976. But a worldwide shortage made prices skyrocket. Uganda's crop is estimated to have earned $5 million.
services like hospitals and replace those who fed abroad. Africa and Arab are already very strong in advanced stage. We have already united and I did this when I was the chairman of the OAU in 1975-76. I am sure which the conference was held in, uh, in Cairo. Every head of state and the government of Africa and Arab have signed the, uh, the declarations of uniting the Afro, Africa and the Arab. Therefore, nobody will divide the Africa and the Arab. They will be strengthened. Thank you very much. This year, Amin decided to celebrate the anniversary of his coming to power at Kiboko, his tribal area in northern Uganda. Kampala's Makerere University had a staff at the exhibition. Scores of students at the university were arrested by troops and members of the state research unit when they protested against the acceptance of the army in New Zealand. Many were never seen again and were assumed to have been executed without trial. The only people not taking any great interest in the proceedings were our mean sons, Mwanga and Moses, two of his 31 children. Meanwhile, Big Daddy, as he's come to be known, presenting new colours to a regiment. The president presented wing badges to girl pilots who recently completed their flying training in Britain. This was marked with a fly pass by Soviet supplies. <laughs> to become their ruler if the country breaks with England. The Scots' reaction was one of laughter. Next came the crack Marine Corps. Their most big cut was from Armin's tribe. Armin was accompanied here by his right-hand man, Vice President Mustafa Adrizi. Recent reports say more and more military Muslims say he should replace Amin as head of state. They say Adrizi is a far more devout Muslim than the president, but observers say he's even less liberal. These Soviet-made armoured personnel carriers are just part of the military muscle of the Ugandan rulers of Bogle.
those who made them. I have no anybody intention from now onwards. I want to be very friendly to the entire world community. Thank you very much. Mr. President, uh, what is the correct picture? Uh, regarding